<laughs> Welcome to the July 14th, 2017 edition of Colorado Inside Out Post Game, a special web exclusive production here on Channel 12. Let's get a quick take on the opponents of the I-70 expansion project filing a lawsuit in U.S. District Court this week. Citing faulty environmental studies that led to the initial green lighting of the project, plaintiffs are asking for a pause in the start of the project. If they win, the city and state would be required to reconduct the studies to gauge its true potential impact. Patty Calhoun from Westward, this is going to be a huge project if it goes forward in the middle of Denver, and it seems that this is part of the pun, a last-ditch effort to make sure it doesn't happen. Do you think there's any likelihood that we will see a demand, or at least a legal demand, for a new environmental study? Well, the deadline for filing a lawsuit was Monday, which is why we saw this one filed, which is why I think there was a second one filed then. You know, it's interesting because it took, what, 12 years till we finally got the plan for this. Then there was the quick scramble to modify the plan, which would put some of it, uh, some of the highway in the ditch. Um, and now it, it is just steamrolling forward. It doesn't seem like any kind of objection from the neighborhood, from environmentalists, from traffic planners is pre preventing, a, pre uh, putting up enough of a roadblock that it's going to stop it. But we could be surprised, but I see this going forward and I see the area around I-70 and the National Western Stock Show uh, just being an incredible mess for a decade. David Kopel from the Independence Institute and DU Law School, you're one of our two esteemed lawyers on the panel. As you look at this, I mean, should, are all lawsuits created equal? Does this have an equal shot as if it would have been a few years ago? Or because it's at the deadline, does that speak to uh, its probability? No, I, I, it, I, I don't think it will succeed, but it, it's, it's not impossible. This was reported by the, by the way, by the Denver Business Journal, which as the Rocky Mountain News is now gone and the hedge fund that runs the Denver Post keeps strangling uh, everything except sports coverage there, uh, the, the Denver Business Journal is really becoming an increasingly important source for and anybody who wants to be in, informed. Um, as they explain, the lawsuit says, that, well, the environmental study you did for I-70, you didn't really sufficiently think about this Denver plan for flood management, which like includes turning City Park Golf Course into a giant water hazard. Uh, and the response to that from the I-70 planners is, no, we didn't have to study that whole big flood thing separately, which is a separate Denver project that's, you know, could be supported by bonds, um, because we have our own water management program within the city, within the I-70 project itself, and that's what had to be studied. And if this other thing about City Park Golf Course and goes forward, yeah, that might mitigate how much we need to do in, in, in flood water management, but within the pro we can go forward on our own, regardless of what happens to the City Park Golf Course. So therefore, there was no need for the I-70 study to get into detail about City Park. Penfield Tate, attorney with QTAC Rock, also a long-term state lawmaker. I know you're in a tricky position on this, but just as, as from what you can tell us looking at the situation, um, should people who are against this idea put a lot of hope into this last lawsuit, this, this lawsuit? You know, I don't know if they should put hope into it, um, but it is the process that's, that's outlined. And, and so that our viewers know, my law firm does financing for CDOT, and I've done financing for Denver on the um, Platte to Park Hill project, the wastewater project. And so this is the venue that's been provided to citizens, the outlet. I know there have been a number of community meetings that both the city and CDOT have sponsored, and I know both the city and CDOT know that there's still some opposition uh, to, to the project. So we'll see how it shakes out. Ben Gill, public affairs consultant, speaking of uh, opponents of the project, you've had a, uh, a proud pin on your lapel uh, the last few times you've been on the show. Uh, speak to your thoughts about this lawsuit and its likelihood of moving forward. Well, it's the latest in a series of lawsuits. I believe that this is either number seven or number eight uh, that have been filed and that are now in court uh, regarding this matter. I, th I think it's interesting. I mean, when you think about the mayor's State of the City speech where he talks about affordable housing and mobility and a city for the people, David, not for squirrels, um, <laughs> the point he's trying to make and that he totally fails at making because he totally fails at walking the walk is that this is a city for 
people to be able to move around in and be able to live and work and function in and that it's not a place to pass through in your automobile. Um, so I think if we had a mayor that was serious about the rhetoric that he chooses to just constantly spew out, we would see a much different direction on this. But because we don't have that leadership, all we have are these sorts of tools to fight back as citizens. And to say that there are some citizens that are unhappy is a, a massive understatement. The CDOT and city meetings are public in name only. They tend to be held at unfriendly environments. They tend to be staffed by people that seek to stifle dissent. Uh, and there's not really been a meaningful public venue. And in fact, when the administration and others go out into more open settings, they're constantly confronted with petitions and protesters and signs and noise. And that's why they don't have real public process, because they don't want to hear it. So I don't know how successful this particular lawsuit will be, but I do know that every single chink against this project helps slow it down. And when you're talking about the kind of massive infrastructure investment, we're talking about billions of dollars over the next 35 years for two miles of highway. So I think it's increasingly difficult for CDOT, the city of Denver, and the state of Colorado to actually be successful with this as the noise continues to go up and not down. That's all the time we have for Colorado Instant Out post game this week. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. For everyone here at CPT12.org, I'm Dominic Dizzuti. Thanks for watching.